Keto, ketovore, carnivore, what do I do? Well, I, today I'm going to tell you what I eat, when I eat, how much I eat, and how I got to this point today. And just a friendly reminder, if you happen to be making YouTube videos of your keto or carnivore journey, don't forget to turn your mic on when you start your recording. It's thoroughly depressing to review it and have no audio. So, over uh, about four years ago or so, I started doing keto and what I would call mainstream keto at the time, which is um, high fat. What I think of now is pretty low protein, about 20% of your total intake. And then the rest would be low carb vegetables, berries, nuts, that kind of thing. And I had a lot of success doing that. I lost over 50 pounds and uh, I maintained that pretty well for, uh, a, a, I don't know, a year, maybe roughly or, or something like that gained back a few pounds, and then I just totally, totally came off the rails. And I, I won't retell that whole story, but uh, if you're interested, I do have a video. You can check it out. I talk about the how, the why, um, you know, how I had just avoided complete and utter failure and uh, got back on track. So at that point, I, I probably lost a few pounds back down and muddled around for a year, year and a half at 225 or, or something like that. Then about 15 months ago, I, I would say, I really decided to get serious again about my diet. And I, I did extremely strict keto with uh, 40 grams or less total carbohydrates. And I, I, would, I would say I, I did that, again, I don't know exactly, but probably within, you know, three, four, five, six weeks, I really transitioned into what I do today. And I, I've been doing basically the same thing ever since, which is um, no grains, no processed food. I avoid vegetable seed oil as much as humanly possible, and I don't eat or drink sugar. And, and I think that if you can get those parts right, you just have lots of wiggle room on, on what you build on top of that foundation. I don't know that that's more important than what you eat but i think it, it, it's just as important because i think no matter how much good food you eat on top it's extremely difficult to offset all of that real junk uh, that you're intaking so those are the things i i don't eat what do i eat i eat meat uh, a lot of meat the majority of the meat that we eat would be uh beef and bacon we we eat a lot of that but it's not all that we eat uh, we raise our own meat chickens, so um, we do eat chicken. Uh, I happen to like it fried in bacon grease until the skin is nice and crispy. Uh, we also eat some fish. Uh, we eat some shrimp. My wife likes a pork steak and pork chops. I don't like that near as much as the others, but we eat, we eat that also from time to time. Uh, and, and other meats as well. There are some meats that I eat that people would probably frown on, I, I would guess. Uh, I really like breakfast sausage, although I don't really ever eat in the morning, but uh, I like bratwurst, I like Italian sausage, I like hard salami, uh, pepperoni. So those are all kind of sprinkled throughout uh, you know, what we eat also. We eat lots of eggs. Now we have 14 laying hens, so we eat eggs. I actually don't eat as many eggs as uh, I probably should. And it's one of the things for a, a, a couple of um, different reasons that I am trying to eat more eggs uh, in my diet. Uh, so eggs, we would round out what we eat with uh, full fat dairy. So real butter, uh, real cheese, the cheddar, Swiss. I, I like a lot of different cheeses. Now. Normally, I would eat that cheese more like a condiment or with my meal, at least. So cheese melted on my scrambled eggs or in an omelet. Uh, sometimes if I'm having hamburger patties, I'll slice some cheddar or, or Swiss to put on top. Uh, maybe slice some Parmesan to eat when I'm having a steak or, or whatever. I, I try to avoid eating that cheese between meals as, as much as possible. I, I just really don't do that. Uh, and I use heavy whipping cream in my coffee. So that that is about everything that we actually eat as food. Now, we also use pepper. 
Uh, I use pepper on almost everything. And we also like herbs and spices on a lot of stuff. So we do things, we do those things again. Now, that is our diet about 80% of the time. And I call that carnivore. Now, let me know what you would call it. You can leave that in the comment. Tell me what you think it should be called. I call it carnivore, however, and again, about 80% of the time. The other 20% of the time would be things like uh, onions and green peppers added to our eggs or sauteed with some, with some kind of beef, for example. Uh, I really love the jalapeno peppers stuffed with cream cheese and bacon, a little cheese on top and baked in the oven. Uh, we also do that with mushroom caps sometimes. Uh, I, I will have some blueberries uh, some from time to time. My wife on occasion will have another, will have a different piece of fruit. Um, I, I don't venture into that area uh, very often, but that would be about 20%, about two out of every 10 days probably is kind of the mix. And, and what do you call that? I, I don't even know. I, I mean, I wouldn't call it carnivore. Uh, maybe ketovore. I don't count the carbs on those days. I don't really track that anymore. I haven't for a long time. So what's my total carb intake? I don't know. The ones that come from vegetables are probably still pretty small. I would guess even on those days, the majority of my carbs are probably coming from my heavy whipping cream or some cheese and, and stuff like that. But I don't know. Um, when do I eat? Well, I eat when I'm hungry. And that answer only just leads to another question and doesn't really give you a lot of details. But it is important to say when I'm hungry because I don't have a scheduled eating time per se. Normally my first meal would be around noon to about two o'clock. And when I eat, I eat until I am stuffed. And I mean really full. And, and then later in the day when I get hungry, somewhere between five and seven, whatever it happens to be, I'll eat again. And, and again, at that meal, I will eat until I'm stuffed. So that's when. The only exceptions to that, there are days where if I'm just not very hungry or I, I, I'm just doing something, if that first meal starts to begin to slip into 3.30, 4 o'clock, um, I, I normally will not eat again that day. Now, I might start to get kind of hungry at 9 30, 10 o'clock at night, but not really hungry enough to eat a meal. And I don't want to eat at 10 o'clock and try to, you know, go to bed. So on those days, I would just eat one meal that day. And that used to be probably 40 to 50% of the time. Uh, I'm really trying to, uh, to change that, to get that to be on a, a less, much less frequent basis. I want to get to where I'm eating two meals a day most of the time because I, I'm not really actively trying to lose weight anymore. I do want to work on body composition, but yeah, I weighed 162 or, or something like that this morning. So I'm not trying to actively lose any more weight and only eating one meal a day. I, I, I will still continue to lose. So trying to, trying to change that a little bit. Uh, how much do I eat? Well, you know, the, the somewhat silly answer uh, I've already given you until I'm stuffed, but that doesn't really give you any kind of details. As far as calories go, I, I mean, I am, I am utterly clueless. I've, I've never counted calories. I think that there's lots of evidence to show that counting calories is just a bad idea for multiple reasons. So I, I've never done it. So that part, I, I could, I would have no idea. The amount of food itself, um, not long ago on a day when we had ribeye, and I remember because we don't have it nearly enough uh, to, to, to make me happy. I would like to have it every day probably if I could. Uh, but I remember that day because that's what I happened to eat. And, and lunchtime on that day, I ate either three or four eggs, probably with some cheese, and then how much ever bacon I could stuff in my face. Yeah, I, I mean, whatever that is, four or five six pieces, I don't know, four or five ounces maybe. Um, and then in the evening, me and my wife both had um, probably about a 13 ounce ribeye. And that was all that I had at that meal. And um, I was pretty stuffed. Now, could I have 
stolen two pieces of meat off my wife's plate while she wasn't looking and uh, managed to get it down. Probably not that that would have been good to do, but, um, but I was pretty stuffed. So that's about the amount that I can eat at a meal. Um, you know, how many calories that is, I don't really know. The other thing that, that people might wonder is well, what is the fat to protein ratio? Again, I, I, I don't know. I would guess probably around 70, 30, as far as, uh, the, the calories coming from fat to, uh, to protein, that's roughly what ribeye is. It's roughly what brisket is. It's roughly what eggs are. Uh, I would guess that's probably my ratio, but I've just never tracked that, that kind of stuff. I know one thing, my wife does prefer a little more fat than I do. And so she will oftentimes put butter on top of it. We cook our ribeye in butter, but she'll then put more butter on top. She does like a little more fat in, uh, in, in her diet, but you know, she might be 80, 20 or 75, 30 or 75, 30 would not be correct. 75, 65. Um, but the exact amounts, I, I, I just don't know. We've just never, never tracked that. Uh, the last thing sometimes people will ask is, do we do organic? Do we buy organic? Do we do grass fed, grass finished? Um, and, and the answer to that is no. Now, if we did do grass finished or all organic, would it make a difference in our health? I mean, is it better? Yeah, I mean, probably. I don't know. But the cost difference for us, it, 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 it just is, is not. And again, we know where our eggs and our chicken come from. We do the best that we can, but we, we, don't, we don't do those things. Which probably just the final little piece here, one of the objections I get about doing keto or carnivore is is on cost it's one of the things that's just often you know people say well i, I can't afford to do that the reality is I, I think for most people maybe for the majority of, of people would be if you buy your meat wherever you're currently buying all the other junk that you buy and you buy it on sale you buy 70 30 ground beef you buy it on sale. You buy chicken when it's on sale. You buy steak when it's on sale. That, that's what we do. I think that what most people would find is that ultimately they will spend less eating this way than they do the other. Because if you stop buying processed food and you avoid vegetable seed oil and you stop buying grain and you don't buy Mountain Dew or Coca-Cola or any of that other kind of stuff, you're going to spend less buying good food, and I don't mean organic USDA prime grass finish, I mean food that is vastly superior to what you're already eating, and you're going to spend less money. I know that we do. So, and if you found that to be true, by the way, let me know in the comments below, because that's some of the pushback that I get often uh, from people. Look, if you'd like to have any more details, if you have any questions, let me know. I read every comment, and I respond to almost every one. So, test me on that one. Uh, put it in the comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.